Okay, so now let's talk about AWS Lambda. So if we use an EC2 instance, we have a virtual server in the cloud, but we are bounded by the amount of memory and CPU power we give it. It is continuously running, even though sometimes we don't use it. And if we want to scale, we can use an auto-scaling group, but that means that we need to add or remove servers over time. That may be a little slow, or that may be sometimes very complicated to implement. With Lambda, this is a new way to think about it. In this case, we don't have servers, we just have virtual functions. And these functions are limited by time. So they're intended for shorter type of executions. They will run on demand. So that means that whenever we run a function, it will be there to be run. But whenever we don't need a function, it will not be run and we will not be built for it. And in case we need scaling, it's already automated as part of the Lambda service. And this is why Lambda is a very popular service from AWS. So the benefits of using AWS Lambda is that the pricing is first of all, super easy. You're going to pay per request and per compute time. And the free tier is also very generous. So you get every month, 1 million Lambda invocations and 400,000 gigabyte seconds of compute time. What this means is that you can run on Lambda some pretty good services for free. Now it is integrated with the whole AWS suite of services. So we have integration with so many of the services we've seen so far, and it is very important event driven. So the functions will only get invoked by AWS when something happens, when an event happens or when needed. So that makes Lambda a reactive type of service, which is important going into the exam. It is fully integrated with many programming languages. You get easy monitoring through CloudWatch. We haven't seen what CloudWatch is, but it will be the monitoring solution in AWS. And finally, it's easy to get more resources per function. We can get up to 10 gigabytes of RAM per function. And if you do increase the RAM, it will also improve the CPU and the network quality. So all in all, very good. Lambda can run many languages. It can run JavaScript through Node.js, Python, Java, C Sharp, Golang, C Sharp, PowerShell, Ruby, and any language you want through the custom runtime API. And one last runtime is called the Lambda container image. And this allows you to run actual Docker containers on top of Lambda but these container images must implement the Lambda Runtime API, which is not the case for every single Docker image. So they are very, very specific Docker images that you can run on Lambda. And so coming to a, from an exam perspective, uh, you don't need to remember all the languages up there, but still it's good for you to have a list. But if it comes to running Docker images on AWS, ECS and Fargate is going to be a preferred way of running these arbitrary Docker images, so any kind of Docker images, but the Lambda container image does exist if the Docker image is compliant with the Lambda runtime API. That may be too specific for the exam, but I wanted to let you know of this detail. Here is a very common use case of Lambda, which is to create a serverless thumbnail creation service. So say we have an S3 bucket and we add images in it. So our users are uploading a beach image into an S3 bucket. The S3 bucket will trigger a Lambda function once the image is uploaded. And that Lambda function will take that image and will change it to create a thumbnail. It will push the thumbnail back into Amazon S3. So the thumbnail is a smaller version of the image, or it will also push some metadata about the thumbnail into DynamoDB. That includes the image size, the image name, the creation dates, etc., etc. And all of this is fully event driven and fully serverless. With S3, we don't provision servers. With Lambda, we don't provision servers. And with DynamoDB as well, we don't provision any servers. So that is a great pattern because this serverless thumbnail creation will scale really, really well. And we will be able to not worry about provisioning servers to make it scale. Now there's another very common use case for Lambda, which is to create a serverless cron job. So cron allows you to define a schedule, for example, every hour, every day, or every Monday, and based on that schedule to run a script. And by default, a cron job is run on a Linux AMI, so on a Linux machine. But we are serverless, so we cannot provision an EC2 instance. So instead, we'll be using something called CloudWatch Events or Event Bridge. And this service that we'll see later on in this course will be triggering every one hour 
our Lambda function to perform a task. And effectively, we have no servers in this because CloudWatch Events is serverless and Lambda is serverless. And so effectively, we're launching a script every hour through a Lambda function. So I hope you can see now the trigger of it. The Lambda functions is really for serverless functions in the cloud. Now let's just talk about the pricing. So you can find the Lambda pricing at this URL, but it's very simple. You pay per call, so that means the first 1 million Lambda invocations are free. And then it's also very, very cheap. You're going to pay 20 cents per 1 million requests thereafter. You're also going to pay for the duration. So the free tier, as I said, is 400,000 gigabyte seconds of compute time for free. And that means it's 400,000 seconds if the function has one gigabyte of RAM or 3.2 million seconds if the function has 128 megabyte of RAM. After that, you're going to pay $1 for 600,000 gigabyte seconds. So all in all, the bottom line is that it's going to be very cheap to run Lambda on AWS. And so it's a very popular service to run your serverless applications and websites. And going into the CCP exam, you need to remember that Lambda pricing is based on calls and duration. So that's it for this lecture. I hope you liked it and I will see you in the next lecture.